and I'm getting mighty tired of your trifling ways and of listening to that jackass Bray. Hey, 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 it is Curly Shirley and I'm back with another tutorial. So today, the focus, snow, winter. If you're from Toronto, you get it. If you don't, you're lucky. <laughs> So I'm going to get started by obviously taping my horizon line, going in with the blues, dark blue, light blue, white, standard colors for today. I'm going to be taking my large paintbrush and making long strokes horizontally as best as I can. Again, we're doing sort of like dollar store paint, so it's not going to be the best, but if this is something that you kind of want to work on, you want to practice on, it's perfect because... It's cheap and there's still an opportunity for you to kind of perfect on your skills, right? So after I go in with that dark blue, I'm going to go in with my light blue, put half of it over the section that is already covered with dark blue, as well as the part of the canvas that has no paint on it yet. From there, I'm going to be going back and forth. You don't want to be rubbing too hard, sort of just dragging the paint across, pulling it a bit up as you go um, and then the further down that you go you're gonna want to make sure that it has the least amount of the dark blue so once we do that we are going to mix a tiny bit of white in it and then sort of again make our way down towards our little horizon line made with the tape the closer to the horizon line that we get the more that we're going to want to lighten the color as much as possible and then once we have those set colors kind of placed in we're just gonna go back and forth like i said gently and sort of blend that in if you find that there's a few like white spaces don't raise your blood pressure too much once things dry there's always an opportunity to go back and kind of perfect but again this is sort of just like a little study and learning a little bit about like you know the different paints the colors how the colors relate um, so don't put too much pressure on yourself once I finish that I'm going to rinse my brush off a bit not too too much if you've been to any of my paint nights, you know I'm not big on rinsing the brush. I like the dimension that's added when I kind of keep the, the colors blended. Um, but I put a little bit of a wash in with the blue that was on the brush and then I went in with white just because if I go in with straight white, nobody's going to see anything and everybody knows that when you do kind of look at snow, even though it is white, it reflects a lot. Um, and in this case, it's going to be reflecting blue because the sky is blue. So once I kind of put that base down, I go in with the straight white and I just try to make a little bit of texture. Once that's done, we're going to take a quick break and allow it to dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to go in and start adding some details. So at this point, I did take a little bit of black. I'm going to be mixing the blue with black, but you want only a tiny bit of black. You see there? Barely see it. That's the point. Once you put black into anything, like you cannot go back. So you want to make sure that you're going a bit at a time. Once I get the color that I like, I'm going to go ahead and make some lines these are going to be our tree trunks all right so the most important thing here is you want to remember that the middle of your piece just like the horizon horizontally vertically you want to draw the person's attention or the viewer's attention towards the middle so you want to make sure that perspective wise the things closer to the corner are going to be taller because they're going to seem closer and again draw the viewer's attention to the middle once I kind of got that down, I'm going to go in with my medium brush. I'm making sure that the brush is flat, okay? It's not on its side, it's flat. And I'm going in with that same color that I used for the trunks and I'm just dabbing. So there's two key things that you want to remember when it comes to making these leaf details, all right? Um, the first thing is that you want to make sure that you're breaking down your objects into shapes. So when we think about the top of a pine tree, you can kind of see that there's triangles. You know, when you're breaking it down, when you're in school drawing something, a pine tree is like triangle, 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 triangle all the way down. So you want to try and um, keep that same shape another thing that I would probably note is that when you're looking at a tree you'll notice that it usually is very dense towards the middle and then as it branches out it sort of I don't want to say fades away but maybe the leaves are not as um 
as intense, right? So you want to make sure that when you're dabbing, the dabs that are on the outer edge or like the further leaves are not as hard of a press with your paintbrush as they would be if you're doing them over the trunk or around the middle. I've said it before, I'll say it again with my weird painting techniques. If you feel like you guys are having a hard time sort of visualizing what I'm saying because I know that this video is going a little bit fast, squint your eyes, all right? Squint your eyes and think about how you would see something kind of blurry in the distance. A big thing about painting is kind of just, again, knowing your shapes and then we sort of work with that with color relation and how colors kind of play off of each other. Okay, so once I kind of have the groundwork laid for the trees that I want um, and that kind of dark blue, blackish color, um, I'm gonna tweak anything, like if I feel like I'm missing any trunks or anything like that. And then from there, I'm going to be starting on my highlighting. So with the highlighting, we're pretty much gonna be doing the same motion. The only difference that's gonna change is the colors. So we're gonna go in um, and add a little bit of that straight blue on top um, then we're gonna go with maybe like a straight blue light blue mix and then light blue and then white pretty pretty straightforward right um, so the only thing that I would mention in regards to this is that we're looking again at the middle ground right so we want to make sure that all of the light is coming from that middle light source because that's where I'm choosing my light source to be. So that means everything that's on my left hand side is going to be highlighted on the right. Everything that's on my right hand side is going to be highlighted on the left. So if you see here, I'm only kind of putting it on the left hand side or I'm more heavy on the left the left side branches versus the right side. Obviously because the the tree is round, it's not going to be exact but you want to make sure that you're trying to keep in alignment with that light source um, part all right um, if you feel like this medium brush is a little bit too much for you feel free to go in with a small brush um, i tried it a little bit i wasn't really super fond of it just because again like different brushes give different textures their density can um also kind of give a different brush stroke or brush dab in this case um, and i just found that i was working pretty good with the medium brush so i stuck with it but again if the small brush is something that you want to do go for it this kind of study is all about i'm guiding you but it's all about you learning like what really works for you and what makes you feel good so there we go we go in with the next color light blue one thing i do want to say is that as you begin to highlight with your lighter colors the amount of highlight is going to be like a little bit less than it would for that dark blue color and then anything that you feel like you put a little bit too much you just go in with the darker colors again you kind of fill it in and make your way around the canvas pretty much So again, you'll notice here, because my light source is in the middle, but for these trees, it would be on the right hand side. I'm making sure that everything on the right hand side is significantly lighter than it would be on the left because for this side, the left would be considered the shadow, right? If the light source is in the middle, it's not going to really reach anything on the other side of those trees. And y'all, don't forget to highlight your little tree trunks at the bottom, all right? As I was saying, the lighter of a highlight, you're going to be using less of that color. So I decided to go in for the white, but I made sure that I was using my small brush. And in this case, I'm actually just doing like little dots. It still dabs the same sort of way, but I guess the shape of the brush also like I said earlier, alters how it's going to come out on the um, on the piece. But I'm pretty much just going in for the top part. I kind of line it the same way that we highlighted the, the trunk, sort of like making a line just because, again, we know that usually a pine tree is sort of, you know, it usually has that little tall part that if you had a Christmas tree, you would stick the, the star on or whatever you put on top of it, right? Same idea. So I'm just going to go around and kind of like add those dots a little bit. And you'll, you'll notice that everything is starting to come together. Again, 
weird technique squint your eyes you may be able to see it a little bit more clear so i'm just gonna go around the whole canvas and pretty much just do the same thing it's it's a lot of repetitive actions right um repetitive uh but it's a lot of layering and then like i said how the colors sort of like play into each other it's all about like color relations So next I'm going to go in here and kind of just blur out that horizon line, fill in a little bit of, um, you know, where the snow would be around the trunks and that type of thing. I still have a little bit of blue on my brush. Like I said, I'm not like super rinsing the brush or anything like that. Just kind of going in there and, and cleaning up those naked pieces. Boom. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my texture and then try to get a little bit of a shadow in underneath the trees just because we don't want the front or the foreground to be too too plain like just plain white it looks a little bit it looks bare and it looks a little bit too like two-dimensional if that makes sense so I'm just gonna go in there roughly add some in and almost give the impression of like a pathway if that makes sense put my finishing touches in for me I just wanted to add a little bit of snow or stars whatever it is at first I was like mm, stars but then I started getting a little like you know paint happy you know how it goes you keep touching it and then it ended up being snowfall don't really think through the video you can see it um in the snow but in person like you definitely can so I just went around and added a few dots. Keep in mind that like a lot of this stuff is optional, right? Like you don't, you don't have to do it exactly as is. But once you feel like your details added in, the last thing you want to do is make sure that you are signing your name on your masterpiece. We don't do plagiarism around here, all right? Always sign. You sign, you add the date, 2022, and there you have it. You have created a nice winter snowy landscape. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And feel free to tag me in your masterpieces. I'll be looking forward to painting with you guys again. See you next time.